Hey guys, welcome to an oddball episode. Most of them are, but this one's going to be even worse. Um, I called this one the empty guitar case. Is that clickbait or what? Well, apparently because you are watching this. Now, here's what happens. Let's start this off. Some people don't like me playing the guessing game with them because... I like people to discover things for themselves. I don't like to have to tell everybody what to do and think. If I did, the world would be a perfect place, but would lack some level of diversity in human thought. So I, I, I try to do my best to give people the opportunity, but let's play the game. What is my favorite thing to open up a guitar case and see? Oh, oh, oh yeah, I see you. I see you yelling, the one that's been watching my channel the whole time, all you old-timers, old all you can fangirls, what is it? I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it is the Kentucky Blue Silver Tone from the Sears catalog between 1956 and 1962. Well, nice guess, but no, you're wrong. You know what it is? I like to open up a guitar case and see. You ready? Yeah, nothing. And the reason I would see nothing is because I put a guitar in the case and took it somewhere and it didn't come home because somebody has it and they're taking it away and it's going on an adventure. Meaning I've taken a piece of junk that nobody wanted, fixed it up, had Tammy sign it, put far more time and money into it than anyone would reasonably do but it's going down the road with a little understanding between an artist and I, and that is that you understand Tammy's story, you understand why I do this, and you understand that it's not a wall hanger. You're just going to go out and make some noise with it and tell a story or two of your own. That's what happens when a case is empty. Now, I ran across an artist you've been seeing on my Instagram a little bit of what happened over the last couple of weeks, but very seldom over times, even starting in the 1940s, you had the people that I like to listen to, the late 30s, uh, mid 30s, early 30s, even the late 20s artists. So, you know, 1925, to 1936, before everything become real electrified, the blues became electrified. I like that stuff where you would go uh, to a juke joint or somebody's house and you would just have somebody there that had a day job doing what they do and trying to plunk away on a guitar. And those recordings that are all crackly and stuff, uh, that is what I really like and I like the music that comes from that. So I've been following somebody I ran across something and I got their music I think I heard it on Bandcamp and it's real real primitive like that and so without giving you the name just yet because we got to keep you in jeopardy this you're gonna love this episode by the way so I do what I do I um, started following them figure not not literally well not till later in the show but I started following them, listening to their music, got pretty familiar with their catalog, understood where they started, where they're going, and then took a look at the artists and say, okay, now that you know you got some people following you, are, are you changing a bunch or are you, you staying the way you are? Because it's funny, you'll see artists that start off and you'll have 10 or 12 people in the room uh, at the venue because nobody knows who they are and then the next time they come around you can't get to them uh, but so let's get back to what 
I like to see in the case if I'm going to go out and buy something and somebody sell me something. I really, really going back to the same old time period. I like these 30s and early 40s model arch tops is what I like. Now, you all know this one is the Archcraft Junk Pile. We re re completely redid this thing. It um, playlist up there shows you start to finish. It was the one that had the hole in the back and the binding missing and just all kinds of stuff. And, and I redid this guitar and then put a pickup in it. Went, it's gone out to a few people. You've seen Frank Goldwasser play it. Troy Murrah had it for a while. And it's been beat up. Again, this is a 1933 guitar, so it's 90 some years old, cracks and everything. So it went out for a while, it's come back, and um, I got to looking at the schedule, and I figured out this artist that I'm talking about was going to be in Los Angeles. And in fact, about a half mile from where, I, where my office is for my day job. So I have my suit with me, that's where I wear to work, and then the day come where he was going to be there, and I'd been contacting him and saying, hey, kind of look for me. I want to run into you because I would like if you would uh, give one of my guitars a strum, I could have a word with you and maybe get a little clip of you playing something uh, and and talking to the viewers of my channel. So, end of the day come, I'm still in my suit. I hadn't put my bibs on, my concert wear. But I had uh, started thinking about it. You know, the, the, the music this artist plays is... Uh, early 30s music and so I thought you know I can put a guitar together or take one of the ones I've got but this one is starting to get the actions up a little bit you see that I'm going to have to pop the neck off of this one we're going to do some more work on that you'll see that on an episode in the future but I had this one around and I thought you know what um this one's not ready for prime time just yet. And then I had another one from 1940, and you all know that is the Galliano Junk Pile. We put a bunch of time into that one, and the playlist is up there. And again, a lot of different people played it. Um, the other model that I had um, ended up going over to, to Europe. Um, it had a crack in it. Um, and I think we called that one the Bonneville Junk Pile. I'm going to, not to be confused with another one I sent over there just lately, but when you're hovering around up there towards the end of the episode, just look up there and pick out what you want and maybe click on one of those episodes. But I had the Galliano Junk Pile, but I had a little dilemma. I know it's dilemma. I just like to freak you out and make sure you're awake and... Those of you who like to be negative, I'd like to give you some gasoline to dump on the fire. But the artist is left-handed. I had no left-handed guitars except this one. You know Tammy's guitar. Yeah, it's left-handed. But I thought I could take this, but you know what? Something happens, this person wants to take it. That one has to stay here. So I took the Galliano Junk Pow, you remember it. It had uh, an Italian theme, and it had Leaning Tower of Pizza on it, like this and whatever. But it was strung up right-handed. So if you're going to take a left-handed guitar, pick guards on the wrong side, bridge and strings aren't in the right spot, you got a myriad of other things, not to mention the volume and tone controls. Oh, by the way, let me, let me teach you something here. If you take a wiring harness off a guitar that you order, they're going to send it to you right-handed. And when you put it on the left-handed guitar in the configuration, you're actually going to have to switch some wires on the pots. Don't forget about that. You're welcome. So anyway, I spent a couple nights, did a couple Instagram posts. When I ordered this for the Galliano Jump Pile, I didn't notice, but it was actually coming from, I think, Italy. It took forever to get here, and I ordered two of them. So what I did was I traced, flipped this one over and traced it, cut it out. And the next thing you know, I got a guitar that's kind of looking 
like a left-handed guitar and plays one except for the volume control. So there's a scrap to prove it. So I threw it in the case if you to work with me. Got there a little bit early. And sure enough, Nat Myers is there. He recognized me, and um, we had a little conversation. Now, before we get into all what you're going to see here, which, by the way, is amazing, I'm going to need my old man glasses here. So, in hunting down uh, Nat's music, it's not Nate, it's Nat. You go to Bandcamp, and you're going to find a couple of um, older collections, not older, but over the past few years. And if you get on uh, YouTube and do a search, I think I'm going to give you some links to all this below, so you can just, at the end of the episode, down below the description here, click on this stuff. But there is uh, a, um, on Bandcamp, uh, a release that he did with four or five songs on it. And it's a yellow background. It's got a hat that looks something like this on it. You, can you see this? Can you see me now? Yeah, it's got a hat that looks something like that. That's the one you want. Because what Nat did was he got some, like, real 1930s and early 40s recording e equipment and sat up and recorded himself playing and I swear it sounds like 78 music and if you like that you're going to hear Fred McDowell you're going to hear Furry Lewis you're going to hear Charlie Patton you're going to hear all those influences um, and then there's another album on there I want you to take a look at just buy the buy the the catalog that's listed there and then this is the one that just came out. It's called Yellow Peril. That's Nat. Um, when you hear his music, again, you're going to think that it's, especially the stuff's recorded crackly on purpose, you're going to think it's old, old 78 music, but it's not. So anyway, I, um, I sat down and talked to Nat, and we got some footage, and he's playing the Galliano junk pile, um, he sat there right there and um, played some stuff on it. There's a song in his catalog called Double Wide Blues. I love that. Um, get it. You're going to hear him playing. But he played some stuff. And and then it come time in the show, he had a short set. Um, the old blue slide, you know this. Everybody's had this. This ain't going nowhere. This won't go nowhere. But you'll see that in the footage as well. But... Um, in my conversation with him, um, he signed me an album. He actually signed it to Tammy. And I guess through the guitar, it says, For Tammy, thank you for the introduction to your pops. And thanks for listening, Nat. Now, if you do some background on Nat, you're going to find out that he um, likes to write poetry. And... Uh, he pulled the sleeve out and wrote this on the, on there. The blues ain't a poem. It's a long song that turns one's ears into a conduit for what the heart feels, the eyes see, and what the mind is afraid to think. Nat, thanks, man. So, we took... The Galliano junk pile flipped things around, made it a left-handed guitar, he played it, and I sent it down the road with him, again with the idea that you understand Tam's story and go tell it somewhere else in your own way. So watch for that guitar here and there. Um, if Nat comes to your town, you're going to want to see him. Um, and that's what I can say about that. So... Let's cut right into the footage I shot at the Peppermint Club on September 15th, 2023, when um, Nat was playing their live. <laughs> Thank you. 
guitar that's 80 and 90 years old and you can rescue it and you can send it down the road uh, with somebody that's going to use it and keep this stuff going it's a great thing you want to remember that the blues has been 
uh, something that's been frowned upon in history sometimes as being uh, the devil's music and then it falls in and out of fashion. And the fact that somebody is actually able to keep what's going on from the 1930s going if you like this kind of music and you like these old, you know, guitars, get on there and buy Nat's music. Again, the links are below. Bingo. This album does have a bunch of filler on it. That was the worst thing about vinyl is you're kind of skipping all over the place. But this song is a solid listen, both sides. Um, my prediction is that... Uh, Nat's going to be doing stadium tours in Europe with C6 Steve and the likes of those people before too long. So while you have the opportunity, um, I'm going to give you a link to his site, not only his music, but you want to watch what's going on. The people that he's, uh, that have per se discovered him and are moving him along are, are big names and I'm glad he's having that opportunity. Nat, you know what? You're the best. Uh, no ego with this guy. Um, your stories are awesome. And the fact that you'll sit down with people like me so I can share your story with everybody who's watching this channel is awesome. Thank you, dude. This is going in the collection. Tammy loves your music, and that's the most important thing. So, hey, guys, uh, next time we'll be back to doing something with another junkie guitar. But don't play around. Listen to that music again. If you're going to get anything... Get that one on Bandcamp that's got <laughs> double wide blues. And in fact, I think we're going to close out with that one right now. Here's Nat with double wide blues on the Galliano junk pile. <laughs> Oh